Hello everybody and welcome back to Lucky by Nature. Today we are going to be looking at some of the new Structures Plus items, three to be exact. The dedicated storage intake, the dedicated storage, and we are also going to touch on the gas collector, but there is not much to that one, so it's going to be brief. The reason I am showcasing these three things is because they pretty much go together as you will see further into the video, so let's get into it. First thing we will look at is what it takes to make the dedicated storage intake and the dedicated storage. As you can see, for the dedicated storage intake, it takes 35 elements, uh, 6 artifacts, and 3500 ingots. That's not really all that bad, uh, because really all you need is one. But looking at the dedicated storage, you're going to need 36 ammonite bile. I think I said that correct. Uh, 12 black pearls, 6 element, 375 metal ingots, and 270 oil. It may not seem like much, but uh, the volume that you need to make of these, that would be pretty expensive. Because there, right now, there are about 77 different things that you can choose. And of course, each one of these only takes care of one thing. So you would need a total of 77 at the moment. There are a few things that it doesn't cover, like for instance, honey. I didn't see any of that. Fertilizer and plant Z grenades. Uh, you know, because I have a lot of the grenades and so I was hoping that there'd be a, a choice for that, but there isn't. And as you can see, you can actually stack these babies up. You can go as high as you want. Once you uh, put them where you want, uh, then you can choose basically whatever it is that you want to uh, put in there. And, uh, you know, like it says, uh, dedicated uh, storage. So it's dedicated to just this uh, these things. So whatever you have in there. And it's kind of cool because you can see ex exactly how many you have. And it has uh, 10,000 slots, which is insane. When you look uh, at that, uh, think about uh, things that hold 200, uh, you know, pieces per stack. That's pretty insane, like the ingots. One of these boxes can hold, uh, what, 2 million ingots? That is ridiculous. So yeah, all you really need is, is one of these boxes for pretty much any anything. And But what I'm looking at here is I'm looking to see what happens with the spoilage. Because as you can see, every time I pull it out, it uh, pretty much resets. So I, I don't know if if it's always good to go like that or what the heck. And if I were to put it on in the fridge, of course we have two days. Uh, a little bit over, I think. Yep. Yeah. So if we look at the animal tender, uh, I believe it's around five days. But uh, the big question is how long it, are these good for in those boxes? Because you can't look in there to see, you know, what's happening. Now, another thing that I had noticed when this first came out is you couldn't put certain things in there if you grind them. But uh, so right now what I'm doing is I am testing to see if they fixed it because I believe they fixed it on this last patch. But uh, we're about to find out here. Let me let me do a few things. I don't want to do too much of this. So just a little bit. So that way I will have some thatch and crystal. Yeah, so we I have four different things. So now let's go see if I can pull them in. So we consolidate and boom. Yep, it went in. Now let's go check to make sure that it didn't pull in from out. Yeah, there it is. So yeah, it, it. So now you're able to do that where before you couldn't do it. And so I wanted. There's a few things that I saw, and so I wanted to make sure that uh, before I put this video up, uh, all that stuff was good to go. So yeah, it's pretty sweet. I mean, uh, you can put so much stuff in here, it's pretty much insane. And especially the ingots, but I'll show you the ingots later. And as you can see, I have pretty much just about everything that spoils. And I've been watching the numbers and nothing has really changed 
everything has stayed the same so I don't know if they spoil but like I said I mean that's something that I'm still gonna have to run tests on because I don't know if they are uh, they do have timers um, and I don't know how long they are so if it's like the fridge then of course it would take a few days for me to notice but uh, right now I am painting just uh, to figure out which color I want here and to kind of show you basically how nice and pretty it looks. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to do different colors uh, on different rows because I have trouble seeing the numbers uh, with some of these colors. But it looks to me like black is pretty good. I don't know that white would be very good. It'll probably turn out, yeah, silver. And see, that one's a little tough because it's a little hard to see the, the blue numbers. But uh, let me put this yellow over here. And I went, man, and yeah, this, eh, it's all right. I guess my, my best, uh, number one choice would be black. It's because the numbers do pop out pretty pretty well. And see, I can, I can see the numbers of the fiber at 53,000. All right, so now we are going to look at how this intake works and as you can see I have a bunch of stuff in the dyno so you basically just walk up to it and you hit it and as you can see uh, 1616 items were transferred and what's cool is that each thing goes into its rightful place so you don't have to go and try to sort things out so that's basically the way that works and that is very very convenient so if you want to stack these babies up all the way to the ceiling which like i said you can do that if you want you would need probably a few ladders and basically move them around as you go up to each one of these and uh, set the resource you want in it but once uh, that's done you can pretty much use uh, your remote tool or your transfer gun but um, the transfer gun would not be a good idea to take out from the box and put into the fabricator or a smithy or uh, this chemistry bench because uh, in this example if i had a lot of stone uh, you could easily transfer as much as this uh, chemistry bench could handle and then there wouldn't be any room for anything else. And if I want to make spark powder, of course, that would be a problem. But as you can see, I put the stone first. Then I selected the, the flint. Of course, I, I still had plenty of room for both. But uh, as you can see, I don't have anything over here. There's a spark. <laughs> I have to jump. So I'm, I'm consolidating and it'll, it pulls it out. As you can see now, there's 2,276 uh, that was over here that I had just made. So that's one way to do it. But if they're really, really high, of course, that's going to be a problem. So that's where the gun would come in handy. And I'll show you how you would do that. So I'm going to go ahead and withdraw some of this spark powder. I took about, about 400 or so. Yep, 400. It's kind of cool because it's, you know, more or less like a little bank. And so then um, you would just use the transfer gun. And it would pull every bit of the spark powder and just throw it over there. And that's how you would do it. So instead of having to consolidate and all that good stuff. But if you wanted to pull, some, you know, specific amounts, then of course you would end up using the transfer tool to tell it exactly how much you want and where you want it. But now we are over here looking at our gas farm. And I have one um, Structures Plus gas collector here. And the nice thing about this one is that it doesn't uh, wear down like the normal ones do. And right here in the middle, you can see that you have uh, choices. You can either have the gas balls transfer automatically, or you can have it just stored here. But I don't want to do that. I want it to transfer that way. It keeps on filling the dedicated storage, which this can handle uh, 100,000 versus what, that one's only got 24 slots, so that's uh, 240 gas balls, not very much. But uh, now what we're gonna do is we are going to consolidate, and what you need to know about that is it will actually pull from 
every single one of those collectors, even the ones that are just normal. So that's pretty nice. And also it will consolidate from any anything else. Like right now I have a vault full of this stuff. And so it's gonna go ahead and pull it in. So let's go ahead and There we are. So we got 12,825 and we're only using 1,283 slots. Oh man, this, <laughs> this, uh, these tremors are moving me everywhere. It's kind of making me mad. This really sucks. <laughs> so annoying. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's go outside over here. And now let's check out these, uh, other collectors that are within the range which as you can see that's that blue netting that is the range of the boxes which is extremely large so as you can see there's not much there those are just the new ones but we are going to go out of the range so I can show you these over here are still full see they're nice and full and you can see the range right right there which that's a hell of a range. Now we are in our ingot factory and we have a whole lot of ingots. In fact, we have a whole bunch of vaults and I mean, they're not full, but I know that we have at least 150,000 ingots. At least I'm pretty sure. And we only did one really, really long run where we filled a whole bunch. I think it was like 20 or 21 large storage boxes that we filled to the brim with uh, raw metal. But uh, now I'm putting them into these boxes. Uh, I don't need this many, but I just, I wanna show you something, basically what happens here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and empty one of these here um, because I wanna show you uh, how this whole transferring business goes. And it does, it's, it's kind of tricky because if you try to consolidate, as you can see, it doesn't pull the rest of them. So if you have several of, of the same thing on several boxes, it just, it, it won't transfer by consolidating. It will pull everything from the others, but not uh, other dedicated boxes. So keep that in mind. So now I do have one box because that's really all you need. I do uh, have one box right in the corner. These are all the... <laughs> the boxes that we used to use, uh, which you know what, uh, I'm not getting rid of them and there's a reason for that and I, I will show you here in a minute. But um, I do have one box in the corner of the building that I'm gonna put all the raw metal. And like I said before, it can hold up to 2 million raw metal, which in turn it would, you know, we could have 1 million ingots. Because if you got 10,000, slots and multiply that times 200 that would equal two million six zeros and that's it all right so anyways what i want to show you here is i'm gonna we are going to use the dedicated storage intake which uh you know you would think that it would be good but for something that's very specific like metal I'm not so sure that it's really that useful and I will show you here. So I wanted to see basically um, how far I could use my remote tool because you can only go so far and as you can see here you don't have them on the, the source or destination and so this is important. Now um, so what I'm going to do now is I already went ahead and put uh, the intake down Sorry, I'm jumping around all over the place, but uh, now I'm going to make it bigger because where I put it, it doesn't quite reach the, the corner of the building where I put that one storage. And it doesn't matter how big this thing gets or, you know, you, you basically use a artifact to upgrade, but it doesn't really do anything besides making it, make it bigger. And that's pretty much it. It doesn't increase the range. But the range is pretty large anyway, as you can see. But um, another thing that you're probably wondering is what happens if you pick it up and then you set it back down? Does the big massive, you know, <laughs> totem uh, go up or the little one 
well, bad news. All you have is the little one again. So, uh, but like I said, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that w is useful about making this bigger is that you would be able to see it from far places. But that's pretty much it. Now, let's pretend that we are out and about uh, doing our work. And as you can see, we got some metal here. And we can barely move. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the drake. And we're going to act like the drake is our Anki because I don't have my Anki out here. He's back over at uh, the gas collection area. So basically all you really have to do is just uh, like we did before is come over here. It doesn't matter which dino you use. And you hit that and it goes into the box automatically. And that's wonderful and great. But there's a problem. Because a lot of times you end up getting so full that you can't move. And so then you would end up having to throw stuff out. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what I am doing. I'm not going to be using that big totem thing. What I'm going to be doing is I'm putting these storage boxes here, which are further there than where the totem is. But my, that totem is basically my halfway point. So as you can see, uh, we can see these metal boxes. And the reason you have to change them is because it doesn't uh, know the difference between um, these metal boxes and other metal boxes if I put them somewhere else. So if you try to uh, pull some from those into others, it won't work. So what you got to be able to do is see the different types. I wish uh, that Structures Plus had a way to put names on these. So that way, if you chose all large storage boxes, you can just put the name and it would show the names instead of the type. Because at this point, you basically have to alternate. So if you want to go further out, you basically would be able to put uh, large storage boxes uh, further out. So then you would see that set. It's, it's kind of complicated. But now I'm going to simulate getting too heavy. And we're basically to the point where we're screwed because we can't move. And you don't want to just, you know, throw raw metal out because, uh, you know, you want to keep it. You work hard for it. So... In this situation, we can't move, so the totem is completely, I keep on calling it totem, it's the intake. The intake is completely useless because you can't transfer to the intake for it then to go to the box. So that pretty much sucks, which is why I put down those metal structures because that's the, the thing that's the closest to us. So let me go ahead and get rid of this stone. And now I am going to use... Uh, the transfer tool and as you can see the metal boxes the storage uh, metal boxes are up there so in this situation we would go into our dyno inventory but in of course it's in my inventory right now and uh, then we would select the, the metal storage and boom so it would go in there so then the next step once you fill those up then you would make your way to the center, which I guess that's about the only thing that's good about this uh, intake. And now right here where I'm standing, we can see both the large storage boxes and the metal boxes. So now we would select the metal boxes and select uh, the metal and send it over to the large storage boxes. And that's basically the same way that I did it before. But... Um, once you fill all those large boxes, then you would go over to the dedicated storage and consolidate and it would yank everything in there from those uh, storage boxes. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so this thing for metal, as far as I'm concerned, it's not really all that useful. But for everything else, like for dinos that you use uh, to pick up uh, thatch, fiber, and it picks up berries at the same time. Or like the Anki, if you are using it to get uh, flint, metal, and stone. In those situations, this would be perfect because then you could have those, you know. But in, in my case, all this is is just the metal factory. That's it. So... 
unless you have a bunch of different things these things are useless uh, but most of the time you would have a bunch of different things so yeah so but at least now you get the idea but anyways that's it for me so until next time keep surviving my work saved the human race